from Faith Baptist Church, this is Power Surge. Now your speaker, Jim Kane. I am reading today out of Isaiah chapter 53. I'm going to read beginning at verse 3 while I'm giving those that want to follow along an opportunity to find the scripture and the text. I want to speak to those that are listening on the radio, those that are watching the message right now. And let me share with you, we would love to hear from you at Faith. Uh, right down in the corner of the screen, you'll see the website, faithbaptistlinden.com. That's three words, faithbaptistlinden.com. And, and, and just click on the contact page, and there are several different ways and modes that you can reach out to us. We would love to hear from you. Uh, we really would like to hear what's going on in your life, your praise reports. If there's something in this ministry that has been a blessing to you, we would love to know about that. We would love to know your prayer requests so that we can join you and help you in prayer. And before I read the scripture, Isaiah chapter 53, before I read the scripture, if you do not have a church home and you do not go to church, would you consider visiting us some Sunday morning here at Faith Live? We would love to have you. Uh, just, just, just join us at 10.30 a.m. some Sunday morning. If you would just come and sit and join with us and let us uh, uh, be, be a part of fellowship with you. You don't have to do anything, say anything, or we can, uh, we can pray with you, whatever, whatever the need is. But consider visiting us some Sunday morning at Faith at 10.30 a.m. All right, I'm reading out of Isaiah chapter 53 going to begin reading at verse 3, talking about Jesus. He is despised and rejected of men. That doesn't sound too nice, does it? How, how would y'all feel if people were honest? I think sometimes we are despised and rejected. People don't tell us, especially those of us that live in the South. We just bless your heart kind of people, you know? But he was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and he was acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Verse 4, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, not only his own. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Verse 5, he was wounded for our transgressions. Mm, that's powerful. Am I the only one that's transgressed? He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. I've had a few of those as well, iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Let me read that last verse one more time. If the first two verses didn't get you, let me see if we can, we can get it with the last, the last verse there, verse 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. For the next few minutes, would you anoint me with the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost to share your word the way that you want it shared. Not the way I would do it, not the way I want to share it. Get Jim out of the way. Let me, Father, hide behind the cross and let your spirit through me a mouthpiece speak to the people that are watching and or listening that your word can enhance our lives and you can bless us in every way. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I'm speaking on this subject today, faith in the cross. I've got a couple of stories I'm going to interject in here as well, but what I'm pushing is for us to have, me, for you, to have faith in the cross. Now, if you got last week's message, you, you may remember that I ended last week's message with this statement about storms, and that is, about storms, the fact is that 
It's not if we will have another storm. What is it? It's if, not, it's not if, it's when we will have another storm. It's not if we'll have another storm, it's when we will have another storm. And I was talking about defining our storms. I was talking about embracing our storms. And when it comes to this scripture right here, which is a pretty traumatic, dramatic, troubling scripture, I don't think any of us could handle this. I watch a lot of political leaders in our world and in our nation, even, even locally. I, I watch a lot of them get attacked, and it's pretty brutal. And, and sometimes, whether I like them or not, I'm amazed at what they can take or they seem to be able to take. That's no comparison to what happened right here in the life of Jesus and what we read according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John's accord and gospel about the life of Jesus. But I ended with the fact that when Jesus was crucified, it was actually the beginning of life for us. Oh yeah, we have all kinds of storms in our lives, but Jesus has taken care of those storms. Even the storms that I said last week, even the storms that are self-induced, if you will. The message today, put your faith, not in me, but put your faith in the cross. I am so amazed, and I mean literally so amazed at the people that we trust, but we don't trust Jesus. We don't trust the cross. Could we learn to trust the Lord more than we trust people? Uh, some, of, some of you have home, homeowner's policies, automobile policies on your cars. You've got more trust in those sometimes than we do with Jesus and with the cross. Put your trust in the Lord. Put your trust in Jesus. Put your trust in the cross because that's where every answer that you need. Do you know that he even cares about the small things in, in your life? The little bitty things that you might whisper a prayer. Have you ever lost your, your keys before and you're running around, you've got a deadline, you've got to be somewhere, and, and you whisper this little prayer and you didn't even mean for it to be a prayer. Is Lord, help me to find my keys. And bam, you turn around, they're right there. He even cares about the little things. So let's look at what he has gone through. And let's look at what we do almost to insult him sometimes. Put your faith in the cross. The chances that we take sometimes with people we don't know. The chances that we take sometimes with people we barely know. The chances we take with people that we know are going to do us wrong because they've done it 12 times already. And yet we can't seem to put our faith and our trust in the cross and in the Lord. Now, what I want to find, tell you right now is there are some people that they go to the opposite extremes of this. I told you it's going to tell a story. Uh, I love to read, and I read for relaxation. I read for pleasure as well as I do the Word of God. This is, this is my first reading that I do in a day. But when I get through reading or at bedtime or if I'm just sitting down and relaxing, I love to read. I love to, love to get lost in a good book. And not too long ago, I finished a, a three-book series. I, I like to read a lot of nonfiction and true things that happen. And I was reading about a man that in late 70s and early 80s, he took off to Alaska. And he, he got into Alaska with like a dollar dollar 67 in his pocket one dollar and 67 cents that's, that's that's how he got there and after a few years his name was jason highcamp after a few years jason journaled everything and every day i mean he put down the you know he was bored didn't have all the electronics and everything you know but 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 he journaled and he put down the temperatures and he he put down the weather and he, all the different things and, you know, how many, how many chickens he had now and how many eggs. I mean, it was just, it was incredible. But he journaled. 
Somebody heard about this and they told him after several years, we would like to take your journals and you sit with us and we would like to, we would like to write a book about this. It ended up being three books called Living the Alaskan Dream. But something that I read in there quite some time ago, I think in book two, but that I read in there that just knocked me out a little bit. And I, I've been dealing with this trusting the Lord. Do you really trust the Lord? Do you really put faith in the cross? Jason Highcamp, in, in, in this interview and in the journals, he shared, and I'm going to read it because I don't want to lose the impact of what he said. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jason said, over the years, uh, oh, this is the writer, over the years I've gotten to know Jason. I, I know a lot about his hardships. I know a lot about his bear stories, a lot of bear stories. And on several occasions, she said, Jason has told me, and I saw it in his journals, that Jason said, I would rather live with bears than with people. Now, that got my attention right there. I'm enjoying the book already. I'd rather live with bears than people. Of course, she said, I had to ask him why, and Jason told her. He said, in his opinion, people have greed, envy, and jealousy. Jason went on to say, a bear has none of those feelings towards me. He just wants to eat. So I say again, I'd rather live with bears than people. Well, I say when I preach this message today, put your faith in the cross. Unfortunately, we do encounter some people like Jason. Now, here's the backfire part of this. We encounter people like Jason did, and he had had some people, and if you ever read the, read the book, and I'm not promoting it, I have nothing in this, but living the Alaskan dream, you'll find that he'd been hurt by a lot of people, and he'd been misled and cheated and a lot of, a lot of things. But, but what happens is we get in this habit of not trusting. And so therefore, we don't trust the cross. We don't put our faith in the cross. So earlier I said, we trust people we don't know, we barely know, or people that we know are going to hurt us. We'll trust them, but we won't trust the cross. Now I'm flipping it around. I'm doing a 180 degree turn. I'm, I'm reversing it right here and say that sometimes, sometimes because of people letting us down, we will not trust when we really, really need the to trust the Lord. I promise you right now, the cross will never let you down. What Jesus went through on the cross that I read about, the sufferings that he did. Let me read that last verse again. He was wounded. I'm, I'm going to personalize it for you. He was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was upon him. And with his stripes, you are healed. I don't care whether you trust anybody in this world or not. I got some trust issues myself with some people. I don't care whether you do. Trust in the cross. Trust what he went through on the cross. Make your declaration today. I'm going to trust in the cross. I'm going to weather this storm. I'm going to go through it. And I'm going to come out on the other side in Jesus' name. Amen. And when you do, Learn to accept your calm. Learn to accept your peace. You know, some people don't know how to live in peace and calm. Learn to accept your victory. I was dealing with somebody a few years ago, and, and, and every, 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 every seems like conversation. Every interaction with this person was conflictual. Everything about them was DEFCON 5. You ever, you ever been around those people? And ever once in a while, this person would be nice. I'll tell you, I was lost. I didn't know how to act when they were lost. Is, is this real? Is it going to last? But what happens is we sometimes take these scenarios and these people that get us all worked up and we take it out on Jesus. How many people used to go to church in our world? 
that do not go to church anymore because they got upset and hurt by the preacher or somebody else in the church. You're taking it out on God because of a person. Put your trust, put your faith in the cross. The Lord gives us the peace that paths us all understanding. Sometimes we don't know how to deal with blessings and we don't know how to deal with calm. We don't know how to deal with, with victory. But if you'll put your trust in Jesus, if you'll put your faith in the cross, it will make a difference. And I also want to add that we need to learn how to balance our trust and balance our faith. As, as we normally celebrate the resurrection in the springtime around Easter time, as we normally celebrate that, it's about the cross and it's about the resurrection. I say trust in Jesus. I say trust in the cross. And besides all of that, you can see Jesus in the modern day time. Maybe you didn't see him on the cross when he died for you. But you can see the results. You can see, as I preached about storms recently, you know, sometimes we, we get the residual effects of other people's storms. Sometimes you get the residual effects of Jesus moving in someone's life. It was not too long ago, a friend of mine that I used to go to church with he and his family, his mother, who I'm referring to right now, a wonderful lady, incredible prayer warrior. Just a wonderful woman of God. His, his dad has gone on probably about five years ago. But uh, uh, he's in another state than, than what we are now. But just the other day, it was so amazing. He was sharing the story about the fact that his mother, who had a, a light stroke uh, in recent years, she doesn't drive anymore, but she, she told him, she said, I need to go get a state ID. And she said, I need to get this state ID. And she teased him because he's a pastor also. She said, I need to get a state ID so I can go clubbing. Yeah, that's somebody in their 80s carrying on, right? And the wonderful woman of God, so, but she was messing with him. So I can go out to the clubs. I need a state ID. But they, they, they go to the, uh, the DMV office to get the ID. And there was, uh, uh, he was telling, he was saying that there was a, 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 an older shorter old man, you know, that was in front of he and his mom. And the man was stepped up and he was getting something done, whatever it was. And the clerk behind the counter said, that's going to be $37.50. And the gentleman, he, uh, he proceeded to pull out his checkbook and start writing. And the clerk looked at him and said, well, I'm sorry, sir, but we, we do not take checks. We only take cash or card. The older gentleman, he began to explain that the older gentleman began to say, well, I don't know what to do because I don't have that much cash on me and, and I, don't even, I don't even own a, a, a credit card. And he explained all of that, to which she replied, and I wrote this in my notes, she said, that's fine, don't worry about it, just sign here. And I want you to catch that for a minute. True story, just happened recently. That's fine. When he said, I don't have the cash or the card, don't worry about it, just sign here. He signed there and he got what he was getting. And before leaving, he looked at the clerk and he said, well, how am I supposed to pay for this? She looked at him and she, he said, she patted his hand. And she said, don't you worry about it. I took care of it for you. True story. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the DMV clerk paid $37.50 personally and then patted his hand and said, I took care of it for you and God bless you. Are you hearing me right now? Some of you are going through a storm. Some of you are not trusting anybody, anywhere, anytime, anyhow. But I'm saying put your faith in the cross. I'm saying put your faith in Jesus Christ because he is real in our lives. He's here all around us. He's walking amongst us. 
That's who he is. That's how powerful he is. 1 Corinthians 11, 1 says, be followers. One version says, be imitators. Be followers of me as I am in Christ. Have you seen Jesus today? Have you seen Jesus this week? You may have seen him and you didn't even realize it. He was walking in somebody because he comes into our lives. He fills us with his spirit and with his presence. I don't care whether you ever trust me or not. That's okay. Might be a good thing. I don't care if you trust the person that's right beside you right now. That's okay. But put your faith and put your trust in the cross. Because of this verse, and I'll read it one last final time. I love this. Isaiah 53, verse 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, have you been despised and rejected by the world? Oh, I'm sure you are by a few people. I am. But have you been despised and rejected by the world, by the masses? He was. And he took all of it on for us and our lives, and our salvation. Put your faith, put your trust in the cross. Let's pray. Father, your word has been so rich, and I thank you for it. I praise you. I pray right now that those that have listened and watched, I pray that you would move up and down the quarters and halls of their heart, mind, and soul, that you would bless them, and cause them to have healing in their brokenness. Cause them to have calm in their storm and strengthen and bless, and bless every part of their lives. Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory. And those that are not ready to meet you, those that are not saved, would you call them to repentance and that they give their lives and hearts to you and have a personal relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This has been Power Surge with Speaker Jim Kane of Faith Baptist Church. For more information about this ministry, visit us online at faithbaptistlinden.com or visit us in person Sunday mornings at 1030 a.m.